Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the slow tape effect. First of all, shout out to Luckrar for asking for this tutorial. It basically we're trying to emulate the sound of a tape slowing down or a record player back in the days of vinyl uh, where you turn it off and it slows down. I'm going to show you the pitch bender and the pitch effect in Ad Adobe Audition. Um, the pitch bender is the really good accurate one. It, it sounds amazing. You can slow it down to a crawl. Uh, the pitch effect can actually be keyframed in the multitrack. Let's go have a look. So here I am in Adobe Audition, and here's my clip. So in the effects, time and pitch, you'll notice there's the pitch shifter, which we'll use in a second, but this is the one we want to use. And you'll notice that some of these have process and some don't. The process ones can't be used in the multi-track. They have to be edited on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. So let's have a look. Okay, by default we get our wave and at the bottom we get the preview. It takes a little extra time to show that so we can turn that preview editor off. And I'll bring this up into the front. Now this might seem like a dialog box you have to do something with, but you can actually work within the window at the same time. The default is just that. It's not affecting things anyway, so if you want to choose something like down a whole step, you can see it puts in the uh, effect, and I'll play this. So it's going down two semitones, and a semitone is uh, the space between two keys on a uh, piano keyboard. Two semitones is one tone down. Now, you can also change this based on the beats per minute and range. And basically, the, what they're doing is they're changing the range. Within the display, the editing window, you're not going to see large and small movements. You'll see the same shape of the, of the uh, rubber band that you're drawing. It's just the effect of that, how much it's, it's doing, is based on that setting right there. So, and we also have spline curves. So if you turn that off, you can see these come down straight. So let me go back to default with nothing in here. And you notice that when I move my cursor over the blue band, it turns into a plus. So I'm going to click here, and this will be unchanged. I'll click here, and I'll drag this down. And then I'm going to click again and drag it back up, but I'll do it more gradual over here. And I'm going to change this to five semitones. And now let's listen to this. You can definitely hear it's going down a, a lot more than the two. So let's get crazy. Let's try 20. And again, you'll notice that the display is not changing here but the sound will. Now let's let it speed up. Very gradual. a little bit here. So you get the idea. Now you can add more points into this. So if I wanted that to be less steep, I could bring that up so it's less 
So it's it's quicker to, to move in that way. If you turn on the spline curves, you can't completely control uh, where they are. So you notice that on the left hand side, it's now starting before that point of where I originally started. So if I wanted it to start there, I would have to drag this out. And just working with splines, it's just going to make everything smooth, but it's not like you're used to inside, say, Premiere Pro, where you can have a linear keyframe and then a Bezier handle. It's either or. These are, are just regular keyframes or they're spline curves. Uh, I tend to use just regular uh, keyframes. Now, the other thing to understand is the quality. And if we can go up to the perfect and listen to this. Let's bring that back. And let's really change this. Let's make this 60 semitones. Even though it's that slow, it still sounds pretty good. Wow. Now, if we turn this to the low setting, which is faster to compute, because this is all CPU power, you might hear some artifacts. Now we don't have to just go slow, we can actually go fast. So if I take this up a notch, the whole thing will be faster. And if I take a little piece, down, go to 20. And when you're done, you have to apply this. This is not an effect that you can use the effect rack over here. You have to click apply. And now that's burned into the effect. There's no way to keep that available uh, and change it later. You must process this. So let's go look at taking another clip and we'll drop it into the multi-track and we'll, we'll keyframe this. Again, this is not using the pitch bender. This is using the pitch effect. All right, so, oh yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is we can do it with, with a voice too. So we can shift the pitch of the voice and take that down. Mark and Wendy, we actually just set a casting. Mark and Wendy, we actually just set a casting call. And... Okay, so that's with the pitch bender effect. If we want to keyframe this, then we're going to have to use the pitch shifter. It's not as slow, but we can still keyframe it. So let's try this clip. We have to stick it in the multi-track. So if you right click and choose insert in a multi-track, we're going to insert it in a new multi-track session. Click OK and it shows up here. Now over on the left, we've got track effects and we've got clip effects. I'm going to go to my clip effects, make sure that this clip is selected. And now when we go to time and pitch, pitch shifter. Remember when we went to the effects menu in the editor menu and we had pitch bender, that's why you don't see pitch bender here because you can't have a processed effect in the multi-track. So I'll choose the pitch shifter and we can uh, change this here, whatever we want. And I'll just close this up. And in the top right hand corner, 
I'm going to choose pitch shifter. There's only one parameter, and that's the transpose ratio. And that's this effect here that shows up. So right now, it's set at 1. So if I take this all the way down, and we take it back up, So two different ways to do that. I think the pitch bender is a really cool one as I, I showed you. You can slow that down to a gurgle. You can even use it to create some amazing sound design. Instead of varying the pitch, just take something in and drag it all the way down and you get this monstrous kind of sound just from a normal human voice. All right, hopefully you found that informative. Uh, if you're new to Video Revealed, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us a little more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Paulo Smith, and it's my job to get you sounding and looking your best.